Okay, so this is a demonstration of how to do your dilutions for the equilibrium experiment. It's a reminder about how to use volumetric pipettes. You're going to use a very large one. Um, and how to use volumetric flasks, okay? This allows us to get two decimal places of precision on all of our measurements, which is important. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make these solutions with tap water. So I'm just going to get some water. I'm not using the graduated cylinder to measure with. Just using it to hold my water. All right, and so you're going to figure out in your pre-lab calculations how much of the concentrated acid or base to add. So you're going to do the acid first, and um, this is actually a stoichiometric calculation because glacial acetic acid is one of the few acids that's actually a liquid, but it's 100% acid, so you can compute how many moles then you know how many grams and actually weigh it out so you're going to use your little personal balance these are tricky so you saw me take off one layer of plastic but there's another tray right on top so make sure you remove both of them i like to flip this over and use it just to protect the scale a little bit before you turn it on make sure you set it on the counter nice and firm and then you got to let it do its little thing once it says zero i'm just going to check and make sure that the unit is what i want So we want it to say G right there and 0, 0.00. So I'm going to start by tearing my beaker. That means I just put it on there and I push T. That's going to subtract out the weight of the beaker. Then I will remove my flask. If you have this plastic protective thing, you might be able to measure on here. But if you're prone to spilling, please don't. You don't want to dissolve our scales. I'm just using water today, so I'll show you. I'm not going to measure the right amount. You guys will calculate however much, um, based on the pre-lab, you're supposed to measure, and that's what you want to shoot for in there. Um, if you put too much in, do not put it back into the stock bottles. I want you to just put it in the sink and rinse it with a lot of water. Um, so once you have your concentrated acid, and later on your concentrated base, you'll notice I'm in the hood. That's because the first step is really important that you don't create a noxious cloud of stink is pretty much what you do. I need another beaker. Okay. So, um, so what you can do is you need to put a little bit of plain water into this beaker. You can even do that before you tear, it doesn't matter. Except that you would have to be in the hood to do the weighing. So I'm just putting like 40 mils or so, not a ton, right? 20 to 30 is fine. And then we'll take our concentrated acid or base to the hood to dilute it. This is really important. And you always put your concentrated acid into the water, not the other way around, because it has to diffuse some heat. Okay. Now I'm ready to use my volumetric flask, which I would have cleaned um, carefully and rinsed with the ionized water. There's no need to dry it going to dilute anyway. So the proper way to dilute is to put it into the flask and then we're going to rinse our beaker a few times. This is just to ensure that all of the particles I just carefully weighed out are going to be included in my flask. So about two or three times is good. And then what you're going to do is your final dilution needs to be done very, very carefully. If you go over the line here, it um, is not valid anymore, and you've got to redo it, which means this has to get dumped. So you can see that there's a etched line, and this will be in different places depending on the flask because they're each calibrated individually. So it's really important that you get down on eye level, and you can pour pretty quickly until you get nearby it. depending on how steady you think your hands are. Um, but leave a little bit of space, and then you're gonna use a pipette to fill this up to the last bit with your water. Make sure the meniscus just barely touches that line. You don't wanna go over. You don't wanna go under, it's gotta be perfect. Once you get it just right, you're gonna put the cap on, and these don't go straight down. They kind of they get put on from the side with the thumb. Uh, by the way, most of these flasks are labeled with a cap size. This one's 
so it's capped four, so I used cap size four. Um, it's either going to be three or four for 100 mil flask, so just pay attention to it. If it feels like it's too difficult to put on, don't force it, you're going to break the cap. Okay, so once we got the dilution up to the line, I didn't do it all the way, you guys will. Dilute up to the line, put the cap on. You need to invert this 20 times to mix it thoroughly. If it's not homogenous, um, when you take your pH, it's going to be wrong. Okay. Let's pretend I did that 20 times. It's just water for me, but you guys will do it 20 times. Then you're going to take a small portion of this and put it into a test tube. Make sure you label your test tubes or you're going to get them all mixed up. They're clear, colorless liquids. Um, so label it with the molarity and the identity. And then you're going to take the pH of those later. After that, after you've saved the sample, the next thing to do is pipette so that you can do your next dilution. We call this serial dilution. So that's our first dilution. Our second dilution is going to use this solution. So again, when you pipette, remember, I just aspirate by pulling the, pushing the ball bearing at the top, and then the button in the middle is what you use to suck it up. Now you'll notice down here, I'm not pushing my glassware all the way against the bottom. See, it's not doing that when I'm pipetting because it's not going to pipette very well that way. Um, these are large pipettes, so you're probably going to have to empty the, the air out of the room at least twice. So you just keep going. And same thing, there's a mark, you're going to go up to that mark. You're going to have more volumetric flasks, right? So the first one is going to be labeled. You'll take a certain amount, you have to calculate it, out of there and into your next flask and then dilute up to the line again. So you keep repeating that. You're gonna end up with three solutions for the acid and do the same thing for the base. The starting amount for the acid and the base is different, but every subsequent dilution after that is pretty much the same thing. I can't emphasize this enough. You've got to label things, okay? You're gonna take the pH of all six of those solutions um, and then you can dispose of everything down the sink and melt the water. 